Hey everyone, it's Selena here. Um, I apologize ahead of time. I have my two-year-old here with me, so if you hear him, um, what you do, uh, I apologize because unfortunately this little one is not going to bed anytime soon and I wanted to get this video out to you as soon as possible. Um, so this video I'm going to show you on how to create a layer, uh, like a shadow layer for an image that is not in design space. Usually images that are in design space have a shadow layer that's included, um, but if you download an image from Google or um, another site that doesn't have a shadow layer, you can create a shadow layer in Inkscape. So this is, I'm not a pro at Inkscape whatsoever. Um, I've watched tutorials out there that I just kind of get the basics down and then that's really all I need um, for certain projects and it's worked really well for me. So hopefully um, how I explain this to you makes sense to you. Um, they are, there are a lot of other videos out there. Oh, there's a lot of videos out there that are more extensive and, and probably can explain it better than I can. Um, but this is a simpler version. So the example that I'm going to use is a clip art that was from Google that was posted on Facebook. Um, someone had a question on how to create a layer in probably design space. Unfortunately at this time there's nothing that can create a layer like that that's gonna fit correctly around that image. Um, and I'll show you um, in a little while what I mean by that. Um, so I'm gonna use Inkscape and Inkscape is a free software that you can download um, online and it is like I said, free. Um, it does seem very intimidating at first, but like I said, there's plenty of videos out there that will help you just to get some basics down. Um, and I'll also post a link as to which link to use for Inkscape because there's a lot out there that you can download that might give you viruses or malware, or all kinds of stuff that you don't want on your computer. Um, so. I'll give you the site on, on where to go to download the correct version and the correct from the correct um, source. Okay, so this is the file that I'm going to use. It's the in the Hulk, and so I've already downloaded that to my computer. Let's see if I can remember where I saved it. So I'm just, I, I went to file, and then I chose import, and then I chose my file, and I clicked on link, and click OK. Oh, I don't know why it opened up another one. Okay, that was weird. Alright, so here is my image. I'm just going to make it a little bit smaller. Yeah. Um, and in order for you to size your um, image, you can drag the corners, but I uh, hold down the control key and then I pull on a corner so that it um, sizes in the right proportions. If I don't hold the control key down and I try to stretch it, it's going to kind of make it wonky. So just hold down the control key and then grab a corner and pull or or drag just to make it to the size you're looking for. Alright, so this image is still that JPEG image. Um, what I'm trying to do is trace this image so that I can create the outer layer because layer, right now it's just the square. It's not, I don't need this logo down here, I just need the silhouette of this image. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, select the image, just make sure it's clicked, and then I'm going to go to path and then I'm going to drop down right here. It says Trace Bitmap. This little box over here is going to open up. And then I'm going to choose colors. And I'm just going to select, let's try one color. Because I'm not, I don't need the um, 
details. I just need the silhouette. So I clicked update. You can see that it's all green. That's all I need. I just need this silhouette around here. And you can see these little white pieces here. We're going to fix all that in a minute. So I'm going to click OK and close this out. And now you can see I have my silhouette. But you see there's still this gray part here. Um, it's still a square. I just need this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up to Object and click Ungroup. You know what? That's not the right one. Go to Path and Break Apart. There we go. Break Apart. So now you can see these little pieces here that were just... Oh, I'm going to delete this. I don't need that square. I'm just going to delete all of this. And here's my silhouette here. Okay. So I'm going to get rid of him because I don't need him in here. I just, I'm just using Inkscape to create the um, shadow. Right? So you would think that if I were to stretch it out, that's going to make a, a good shadow. No, it's, it's not. And I'll show you in Design Space what I mean by that. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to select what I just had, um, and I'm going to come up to Path, and I'm going to click on Outset. And when I click on Outset, just pay attention to the Hulk image. You're going to see that it starts getting wider and wider, like it's growing a little bit. <laughs> but what you can do, um, instead of going to outset, clicking it, because once you click it, it's going to go away. See? I don't know if you noticed, but it got a little bit bigger. But I want a little bit bigger than that. I have to keep coming up here and then clicking it again, clicking it again. As you can see to the right of it, it gives you a command, um, like a shortcut. So control and then plus the uh, close parentheses is going to give you that outset. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to click on the image. I'm going to hold control and then I'm going to choose the close parentheses which is um, above the zero on your keyboard um, and then just keep clicking until I feel it's around the size that I want it. So I'm going to go with that. I clicked it about three, four times probably max and I'm done. Um, this is my outline for Design Space, so I'm going to go ahead and save as, and I'm going to put Hulk um, Shadow Layer, and then I'm going to leave it as Inkscape SVG, or you can choose plain SVG, it's really the same thing. And I'm going to click save, okay, and now I'm going to minimize that, and I'm going to go to um, Design Space. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to upload the original image, the one that has all the details. So let's upload using basic upload. I'm going to search for that Hulk. Let's see if I can find that Hulk again. Here it is. Okay, I'm going to choose complex image because I am printing this. So I want everything, all the colors and everything to be really um, bright and nice. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of this white area here and, rid of, and get rid of this little logo here. So I'm going to choose my select and erase tool that looks like a magic wand, and I'm just going to start clicking around him. So that one click took almost all of it away except for this corner here. So let's click that corner there. And then, if you click on Preview, you can see what's left over. So there's my Hulk, but here's all this mess down here. So I'm going to use these, this little eraser tool, and you can slide this up or down just to make the size of your eraser bigger or smaller. So I'm going to use the eraser tool. I'm going to get rid of that there. Click on Preview. Make sure everything looks good. This image is um, not that great of quality. As you can see, there's all these little zigzags on the corner. So... Um, you can clean it up, but for in this example, I'm going to be using that white outline. So the Cricut's going to cut real nice and clean around that white outline. It's not going to click around the edge of this because that's not what the look we're going for. So I'm not going to even mess with trying to clean all that up. If I was wanting to cut it um, the way it is, 
I would want to try to clean it up or try to find a cleaner image so that it's not, you know, too zigzaggy. But we're not going to worry about that because it's not necessary. All right, so let's go on to the next step. Um, everything looks great. I'm going to leave this checked because I'm printing it and save it. Okay, and then I'm going to upload that layer. So I'm going to go to Vector Upload because it was I saved it as an SVG. Um, and I already have I already have it uploaded it um I already uploaded it earlier today so I'm not gonna do it but uh, this is the one you would choose had you saved it as an SVG so let's select this one here and this one here and answer both of those All right, so I have my um, screen zoomed in quite a bit. Okay, so I'm going to change this to white because she wanted a white outline. And then I'm going to just make this a little bit bigger just so that it fits in nicely. And right about there looks like a great outline. So I'm going to set a canvas just so that you can see because the white doesn't show up very well right now on my gray background. So let's change that canvas to black so that we could see him. So I'm going to select the two and you can see there. Now what I was trying to tell you earlier, let's say um, I duplicated this and tried to create my own layer in design space. I changed it to cut and now all the details are gone. Now I'm going to send this to the back and I'm going to try to make my own layer. So I'm just going to make it a little bit bigger just so you can try to get it fit in there. So over here it looks kind of okay but then look at the feet. They're like completely off. Let's try to make that a little bit smaller. It's like okay. It's just, it's just not, the proportions aren't correct. So using that offset, onset, oops, I deleted the wrong one, um, in Inkscape is going to give you that perfect outline. As you can see, it just fits in perfectly. So I would select the two and flatten oh, both of them together. So now that when you click on Go, you're going to see that um, on your screen it's going to cut around the white area. And it's going to be kind of hard to tell here because um, you can't see the white area. Let's, let's go back and choose a different color just so that you can see. Let's do undo. Okay, so let's change this layer to a uh, lighter purple. And then flatten both of them together. All right, and then choose Go. All right, so you can see here that it's going to cut around all this purple. And just remember, when you're doing print and cut, um, your settings are automatically set to uh, bleed, which means that it's going to give a little bit more color than normal just so that you can get that clean cut around the edge so that's why it looks blurrier than the normal but it's 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 correct all right so hopefully that helped um i i use the same thing i'm gonna go back i use the same thing for um for my text so if I'm, I'm using a font that is not in design space and it's something I downloaded from another website, you're not going to have that layer, that shadow layer. So you can also create your layers in design space. So let's just do my name here. Let's choose a pretty font. I'm going to choose a really pretty scripty font. Let's use ballerina script and I downloaded this font from defont.com 
So let's just make that a little bit bigger. All right, so I'm going to make this, um, I'm going to make the background a uh, teal or turquoise color. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select it, I'm going to click uh, on my keyboard, I'm going to choose Control D, and what that did was that made a duplicate. It's there, it's just directly on top of what I just, um, on my other font. So I'm going to choose the aqua, you see it changed to aqua, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to click or press the button end. So on your keyboard you have home, page up, page down, end, and it's just going to bring that, it's just a shortcut, it's going to bring that blue layer to the very back. Um, you can also go up here to your um, object and you can lower it to the bottom too, but I, I, try, I just use shortcuts. So I'm going to use um, end and you can see it looked like it deleted but it's it's just behind it and it's still selected so I'm going to go up to path and I'm going to choose outset that same thing um, which made it a little bit bigger so I'm going to keep doing that until I feel it looks right so I'm going to be using that same um, shortcut that I used earlier which is control and then the close parentheses so I'm going to keep going right around even do it like that like that I think that looks good so now you have your two layers and what I would do is um, right now this one here well, actually, both of them are still a text in text format. Um, so, if you try to upload this in Design Space, it's going to give you an error uh, because it's still reading as a text. So, what you would do, um, I would just select them both and group them. You don't have to do that, but I just group them and then go up to Path and click on Object to Path. When you click on Object to Path, it's no longer editable. Kind of just kind of like when you type text in Design Space and then you weld it together, you can't edit it anymore. It's it's um, no longer a text. It's more of an image. Uh, so that's what I did here. It created it as an image. So. Just remember, it was object to path that I did. So now I'm going to save as, and I'm going to do um, Selena Shadow Layer, and it's going to be saved as an SVG. Okay, let's go to Design Space just to test it out. Okay, I'm going to click on Upload, and I'm going to upload as a Vector. Let's see if I can find. Selena Shadow Layer. And there it is. Click on Save. And, oops. Insert that image. And there are the two. And you can um, see that these are all individual. And then this one's. Let's ungroup this here. You can see they're individual. So if you wanted, oh, that's not good. Let's get rid of this canvas. Okay, if you wanted to um, scoot these together, Mom, happy you could, but because Mom, of the way I created that. Um, Shadow layer, I, it, now that I moved them around, it's not going to match. It's not, see, it's not going to match. Um, so I should have thought of that before I created that shadow. But either way, I mean, it looks good. You, you get the idea of how to create uh -oh. a shadow layer for your text Mom. if you don't have one. Mom. So, like I said, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask. You can reach out to me on Facebook as well. Thanks.